our families are in risk due to uh, the fact that uh, of our enduring relationship with the Canadian Armed Forces. For months, Afghan interpreters were promised Canada would evacuate their family members left behind. But months after the fall of Kabul, some interpreters say their family members don't even have immigration case numbers and immigration officials are giving conflicting information. My two brothers have been missing since Taliban have to co uh, taken over the country. And uh, fortunately, or luckily, one of my brother, he, he made it to Turkey. He was smuggled and almost died on the way. And, and he's still hiding from Turkish police because he cannot, he cannot go to the Turkish police that, OK, I have come from Afghanistan because he will, he will be sent back to, uh, uh, to Afghanistan where he might get killed. Former interpreters say some family members were told to get to safety in third countries first, only to be told later they couldn't be processed while out of Afghanistan. Others have been repeatedly asked for travel documents, papers that some don't have or would require the approval of Afghanistan's new government. Some of them are burning their documents because if the Taliban finds them, they would be killed. That is their reality right now. Nothing is important for me as Canadian, as Canada's safety as first. I do not want one bad person to come to Canada and jeopardize the security of myself, my Canadians, my children here, and my partner. Ghulam Faisi says he knows there are security concerns, but he doesn't understand why Afghan refugees can't be processed in a safe third country like Pakistan, which doesn't currently require a passport for entry rather than waiting in Taliban-controlled Afghanistan. We reached out to the Office of Immigration Minister Sean Fraser to ask how many applications are still in limbo, if they're still asking for documents, and if Canada is negotiating with those third countries on exit deals. In a state Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada says it's firm in its commitment to resettling at least 40,000 Afghan nationals and as of March 23rd has brought in 9,560 with more coming each week, adding we are doing everything we can and using all available avenues to help Afghans inside and outside of Afghanistan. The bottleneck is not the processing capacity of the government of Canada. It's situational and environmental factors on the ground in Afghanistan, including where approved applicants are currently located and their access to travel documents and the ability to leave the country. But the NDP's immigration critic is skeptical. She says Canada has a way to do this quickly and efficiently and is doing it already. The government can immediately issue single travel journey documents to all these extended family members as they are doing for Ukraine, Ukrainians. There is no good reason why they can issue that. But the IRCC says the situations are different. Ukrainians are not coming as refugees and many intend to return to Ukraine. Ukraine when it's safe. The IRCC adds it's staying in contact with interpreters' families to ensure a timely and transparent process. In Ottawa, Shaoli Lee, City News.